thank you everyone for joining um, and it's uh, been uh, a pleasure to uh, work on this uh, report for which uh, this afternoon uh, I'll present um, the findings um, and a few conclusions. Having said that, um, we're talking about um, a report that took a few months to prepare. It's uh, quite a substantial piece of work. Therefore, uh, the, the, the agenda for this afternoon is rather packed. In fact, uh, the vision outlook of financial technology uh, content is um, over is over uh, the following items uh, we'll talk about the scope and methodology of the report we have a look at the fintech revolution and the fintech ecosystem as it uh, is it appears now we we'll look at the technological domain as well as ownership of the technologies and how innovation operates in the ecosystem. And we we'll look at how this sector is moving towards mat uh, maturity through the demand side, through the systemic reach of the sector, and of course, uh, regulation. We we'll look at recent trend and an outlook of what's gonna what we think is gonna happen in the brief um period that's up to 2020 and what future or futures uh we can see for the fintech ecosystem so the scope of the report and the methodology is this study is part of the alphinator uh, project, which is a capacity building project aiming at increasing diffusion and uptake of alternative form of finance for innovative SMEs. The context of this report is therefore that of capacity building and the implementation plan. Um, the methodology followed uh, concerns uh, the identification of emerging and innovative uh, financial technology, therefore we focus on the fintech ecosystem in Europe. We look at technological applications and finally we focus on application to the alternative uh, finance sector. The approach to these studies consists on the scoping of the literature. We look at both the grey and the trade literature as well as academic publications to have an idea of the framework within which we are operating. And we use also um, original uh, research um, in the area defined above. So uh, we interviewed, um, uh, we did 15 interviews uh, with 14 experts in the domain uh, and my thanking goes also to the expert who helped uh, us in getting where we are at the moment. So here we go with the, uh, the FinTech revolution, which is a term that was coined uh, in very recently in 2015 in an article uh, in The Economist. And it uh, basically, um, put together the fact that the banking and financial systems worldwide are being characterized by a string of structural changes. These structural changes have been um, because of the introduction and application of different ways of ICTs, information and communication technologies. Uh, through these technologies, the processing capacity of uh, uh, the sector has increased uh, greatly. New and more efficient uh, products and services have been put into market and has attracted larger and larger share of customers. This wave uh, generated a long-term dynamics, evolutionary dynamics, whereby increasingly specialized activities have been um, uh, characterized the operations of banking and finance. Uh, we can see these uh, dynamics in a historical context. 
whereby technologies such as the telegraph has increased the speed of communication, therefore, and the reach of communication, therefore, initiated uh, international activities in banking and finance to nowadays, uh, whereby the internet is caused a branch reduction in the banking system. In, uh, 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 we saw the, um, the, the, the emergence of financial kiosk and different means of payment such as debit and credit card up to online banking and mobile banking. And according to what The Economist said in uh, 2015, when uh, geeks with uh, technological knowledge and the venture capitalist with huge financial backing gets together, good things happen. And in our uh, sector, uh, we can see uh, what this brought, like um, robot advisor, uh, P2P lending, microcredit and crowdfunding, automated trading, contactless payment, and in general, the digitization of banking and finance activities. Uh, altogether, these uh, innovations, uh, this subsequent wave of technological innovation and application of uh, information and communication technology to the banking and finance system has generated uh, what uh, we now term uh, a fintech ecosystem. The fintech ecosystem is seeing a, a very strong, um, uh, 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 let's say, infrastructure that it's composed by its engine, um, APIs, uh, upon which digital platforms are uh, operating. Uh, backed on uh, cloud computing, uh, servers and database, and the soft infrastructure uh, whereby um, are used by uh, users in order to um, uh, interact and operate. Of course, uh, the traditional banking and financial services and insurance services are part of this ecosystem, as well as new banks and all the fintech companies that are um, emerging. This ecosystem is also formed by, uh, um, uh, is, it relies on those technological application in this uh, field, uh, such as security and privacy and digital platforms, which are, uh, let's say, the, 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 the base um, of the ecosystem, but also um, payment technology, wealth and property technologies, insurance tech and regulatory technology. Of course, the sector, um, the operations on the sector are carried out by um, financial users that include co um, customers, savers, investors, borrowers, and of course, entrepreneurs. Yeah. And <laughs> wow, <laughs> sorry about the feedback. Uh, this sector is also, or at least part of this sector, is also highly uh, regulated. Therefore, regulatory agencies and uh, the legislature is provided banking and financial regulation. Uh, upon this regulation, uh, insurance company and traditional banking and financial uh, service companies are uh, operating. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, with this uh, new uh, regulatory um, drive, uh, this regulation is extending also to other branches of uh, the fintech. Um, as we saw, uh, the um, ecosystem is composed by actors, that means companies, uh, as well as technologies, as well as infrastructures and uh, the soft legal uh, structure. Uh, the actors of the fintech systems, uh, uh, that means uh, companies operating within the sectors, are fintech firms that uh, may be incumbents that are operating already for a few years and startups that are just emerging. These are uh, ICT's corporation as well as payment technology companies, wealth management, P2P lending and crowdfunding, uh, capital market and insurance um, tech companies. 
there are technology developers that are working on digital platforms and application upon these platforms, uh, digital data analytics, cloud computing, etc., as well as the financial customers, as we've, saw, uh, as we've seen earlier, and traditional financial institutions that, while arriving late uh, to uh, the digitization process, they still uh, own um, a great part of um, operation within the system. These are bank insurance companies, stock brokerage firms, etc. Okay, the structure of the fintech ecosystem is composed by companies that are either born digital, these are the new online digital banking and digital financial service firms, these are platform-based alternative finance provider, crowdfunding and P2P lending platforms. There are also firms that are progressing through the digitization process, uh, which in many cases initiated before the fintech revolution. These are debit and credit card uh, companies. They are payment and transfer, uh, money transfer organization, uh, etc. There are firms that have just initiated uh, their digital transformation and it include also traditional and alternative finance uh, provider organization and also commercial and investment bank and of course uh, like in any diffusion trajectory we have laggards the financial operator uh, within this ecosystem are uh, highlighted in this um, figure uh, what is uh, also important to look at is the technological aspect of, um, of the fintech domain. Uh, here we have identified seven main technological domains including security and privacy technologies, digital platforms, payment technologies, uh, asset management technologies that is property and wealth management, insurance technologies, uh, distributed ledgers and regulatory. Here we see the uh, technological uh, domains. A brief overview of security and privacy, privacy technology. Uh, well, we have to consider that this is a group of ICTs that are deployed to protect information for misuse and authorized assets. These are critical technology to the FinTech, but also to other ICT based systems um, therefore, fintech, uh, which depends on um, high-value um, financial uh, data, uses these technologies quite uh, widely. <clears throat> uh, uh, and it, we can think of, uh, you know, security services, service application to data, uh, cloud authentication. Uh, consumer security software and of course infrastructure and very um, important is uh, risk management. These, uh, uh, these uh, technologies uh, are linked to all um, elements of the uh, 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 fintech ecosystem um, and uh, given the financial nature of the data, the frequency of threats to uh, their integrity and disrupt the effect of breaches, there are huge investments in this area from the uh, fintech um, actors. Recent surveys have shown that uh, uh, important investments in cyber security have very high returns, both in terms of trust, in terms of privacy, in terms of risk rewarding, and in uh, typical return on investment indicators. <clears throat> uh, to give an idea of uh, uh, the, 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 the investment that we are looking at, um, the size of the fintech segment uh, uh, in, 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 um, in security and privacy uh, is at around 75 billion with exceptional uh, growth prospects. The, 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 the cybersecurity market exceeded uh, 150 billion um, in terms of volume 
and is set to reach 250 by 2020, 2023. So uh, these uh, investments are spurred by uh, episodical um, security breach and data management blunders that we see uh, almost every week in the news, and by also by the implementation of new regulatory frameworks such as uh, the GDPR or the Open Banking or the Payment Service Directive 2. And these are extremely important also uh, with new alternative finance regulation that are being uh, deployed for crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer lending. Uh, in this in this segment, uh, we can see uh, major players uh, that are <clears throat> uh, traditional uh, and new um, security and privacy uh, companies such as CyberArt, FireEye, and uh, Lockheed Martin, but also giant ICT companies such as IBM, Cisco, and uh, Microsoft and Amazon. Concerning uh, the next uh, part of the infrastructure, the technological infrastructure of uh, the fintech ecosystem uh, is the, di the digital platform technologies. Uh, these are a group uh, of very different but interconnected uh, digital resources, uh, services, and of course content that help enable the value creation um, within the system and this value creation is enacted through interactions between the various users these can be the financial customers that we saw before but uh, also uh, by uh, fintech companies and traditional banking and finance financial companies uh, so these uh, um, digital platforms may have an architecture that is closed uh, or may be open. Uh, a closed infrastructure is simply used to reduce cost and redundancy uh, within an organization, while an open uh, platform or an open <coughs> web API uh, may have the same benefit of cost reduction and redundancy reduction, uh, but also uh, foster inter interoperability, hybridization, and blending of external uh, resources, um, which are usually developed by um, app designers and uh, developers. Concerning innovation, uh, the architecture um, is the backbone of this interactive space. So innovation, innovation activities, as mentioned, happen through interaction, uh, both at technological level uh, in the platform and on the platform. So it's very modular because goods and service provider uh, may find, uh, may plug in uh, new services, new goods, uh, to meet the customer's needs, but also software designers and developers, uh, they contribute to increase uh, the functionalities by integrating new, mod new modules or, for example, uh, removing um, old ones. And of course, uh, FinTech may operate upon these digital platforms uh, by uh, uh, plugging in uh, payment services or compliant um, or even management uh, applications. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, these application spaces, these application, these digital platform technologies have been growing quite massively since 2005. At the moment, we can count some 20,000 of uh, digital platform in existence. Uh, and of course, there's an increasing number of banking and financial organizations that are either born as a platform or are changing, uh, floating towards a platform-based design. Uh, we can find them um, uh, of the first class in um, companies such as ICT, 
uh, giants, Microsoft, IBM, or Apple, um, e uh, traders such as Amazon or Alibaba, and of course, most alternative finance providers uh, in crowdfunding and peer to peer lending are um, platform based businesses. And of course, in new digital banks such as Sterling Bank, Monzo, or N26. Companies floating towards uh, 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 towards uh, um, a platform uh, model include an alternative finance provider in microcredit, in factoring and invoice trading, in finance leasing, and in property estate. Uh, to have an idea of the importance of digital platform technology in fintech, we have to consider that of the 39 fintech unicorns, that these are privately held companies with more than $1 billion uh, evaluation, um, all of them have a business model based on digital platform technologies. Next uh, on the list is payment technologies. Uh, this is the largest and oldest, perhaps traditional fintech segment. Uh, here, technological solutions are developed and deployed to facilitate market-based disintermediated payment uh, from firm to firm, as well as from customers to firms. In the last 15 years, um, we've seen uh, a very high growth in e-commerce, cashless payment, mobile transaction, and one to main uh, one to many payments. Uh, consider when you put a single <coughs> uh, order on Amazon by buying uh, from different sources. Uh, these in the past have caused great problems in uh, payments. And uh, this problem is now taken care of by uh, payment technologies. Uh, we're talking here about um, a, a, a system which literally connects uh, every aspect of um, the uh, uh, fintech ecosystem. So, technologically speaking, we're talking there is no single uh, standard uh, of, in operation. There are a group of competing, perhaps complementary technological solutions that are being widely used and they have some geographical um, uh, boundaries, however, uh, as an entry-level technology, we can see um, payment tech using QR code payments and uh, near-field communication for debit and credit card payments. We can see increasingly that digital wallets are used for this sort of um, payment, as well as remote pay payments and wireless applications. So, the payment uh, sector is quite mature and um, diffusion uh, of compati compatible uh, technologies is extremely fast at the moment. We can see applications that are easily plugged and played uh, within uh, <coughs> large platforms, and these uh, provide services to a wide range of alternative finance providers. <coughs> Uh, concerning uh, space for uh, further growth, well, uh, it is important to understand that, first of all, uh, payment technology and, um, are uh, eliminated almost everywhere um, uh, cash-based uh, uh, transaction. In Sweden, for example, uh, cash-based transactions are at an historical low. 2% uh, of all transactions uh, only are based on cash. In the UK, contactless payments uh, overtook other means of retail payment in 2017 and are still uh, being diffused quite highly. Um, for what concerns the merchant uh, processing volume, we are at about 7 trillion of US dollar now, but uh, in the business to business payment segment, there is a huge uh, room for improvement since uh, payment technologies uh, cover only about 40% uh, uh, of the volume. And 
the, the reason why these are uh, diffusing so fast is that they are very practical, there is low cost, and there is a growing acceptance of this technology-based uh, model. Uh, they, the, the, the spearhead uh, for diffusion is, of course, retail, and there is an increase a push, uh, innovative push in product and service and organization. Um, the main players uh, in payment technologies are uh, traditional players operating in credit and debit card um, payment sectors. Uh, there are high performing new fintech companies that are occupying uh, many important niches, especially those uh, where uh, banks uh, and other financial uh, service provider uh, charge high fees uh, or they operate at suboptimal levels. We're talking here about remittances and international money transfers. We talk, as mentioned before, one too many payment solutions. And of course, um, there would be a new uh, push uh, when the open banking uh, system will be um, deployed further. Um, strategic stance in this uh, sector are um, very important as uh, fintech firms, uh, they still have a competitive advantage by providing a payment service to traditional player. However, uh, ICTs and resale giants etc have also their own um, payment technology linked to their own uh, massive platforms but the traditional players and here uh, we're talking about the old banking are um, have been investing quite uh, a lot of money in uh, payment technology but also licensing in uh, technologies from fintech uh, companies uh, to the point that uh, uh, Give the criticality of this segment, they are now acquiring um, entire payment technology firms to um, implement uh, these technologies within their own organizations. <coughs> As mentioned, a major global player in the payment tech era are traditional uh, credit and debit card companies such as American Express, Maestro, etc. and large banks such as uh, Barclays, Bank of America and Citi. Uh, of course, large fintech companies that are linked to major financial institutions as well as new digital uh, banks. And we see also that um, ICT uh, giants such as Amazon, Google, uh, Samsung, etc., have um, huge stakes in that uh, in this uh, segment. Uh, one uh, interesting fact is that uh, PayPal, uh, perhaps the pioneer uh, in payment technology, is the oldest company operating in this uh, segment and is operating since 1998. Uh, one observation here uh, might be uh, relevant, and if we look at the world um, market for, for payment technology, uh, we can see that the major um, corporations operating uh, throughout the world, such as, uh, I don't know, Visa and uh, Masterpass, Mastercard, etc., uh, have a firm handle uh, in the old world, uh, whilst uh, a huge number of outcomers, uh, newcomers uh, and fintech companies are populating perhaps the vastest uh, global market of Asia. And we see WeChat, uh, we see Ant Financial, and we see other new players operating and growing in this vast market. Next segment concerns assets and property management technology. These, uh, these technologies are very heterogeneous. Uh, we can broadly assign them to two main uh, uh, segments. One concerns the real estates that can be uh, eventually um, divided into 
uh, commercial and residential property uh, spaces. And the other one concerned wealth technology uh, concerning the management of personal or family wealth. Here, uh, for example, the property sector is leveraging fintech innovation uh, in many aspects concerning payment, as we've seen um, earlier, as well as crowdfunding, both equity and debt crowdfunding, and online application to modernize operation in uh, these sectors of property management, which has been very traditional because it focuses on uh, tangible assets real estate, that is. So, uh, PropTech is not a fully-fledged fintech segment, and real estate is certainly a very large um, asset base uh, fintech um, subsector. We can have a broad definition in uh, this uh, Venn diagram, whereby uh, property and real estate uh, technologies are part of a wider sectoral um, organization. Um, investments in this um, segment are growing significantly, even though not at the same rate uh, as other fintech segment. Uh, in 2018, it has just overtaken uh, the mark of 4 billion US dollar uh, investment. There are some major new uh, players uh, based on crowdfunding, for example, Cadre or Crowd Street or PA Street, and various marketplaces where these technologies are applied with uh, uh, an impressive level of success. And there are other segments that are uh, using specialist fintech, uh, especially those related to banking and brokerage technology, breaking into uh, an important area of uh, uh, finance and banking, such as mortgage and options. Wealth management uh, technology, the other branch of uh, asset uh, fintech, uh, these uh, are technologies that uh, are used both for uh, passive wealth management as well as active wealth management. Uh, these technologies are usually deployed in the effort to digitize, digitize operations, uh, reporting and automating advisory services. So it is a rather uh, lively uh, fintech and has serious uh, prospects, uh, especially linked to the generation cycles. Uh, in fact, we have customers in the boomers generation uh, who are already at the peak of their wealth uh, accumulation life cycle and are about to transfer their wealth to the next generation. We have people from the generation X which are just about approaching the top end of the market segment and those uh, generation Z and uh, millennials that are just about uh, to enter uh, the job market. Uh, therefore, the dynamic in this wealth management segment is extremely interesting. Interesting at the point that uh, in very few years, uh, this um, the, the the market will 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 reach a, a point whereby those who have um, grown up basically uh, using digital technology uh, will be the only one using uh, those um, applications. So. Um, the the, the, the uh, major players in uh, these areas, uh, which are pushing uh, the mobile and the digital uh, agenda, are Wealthfront and Robinhood, uh, as well as um, interesting uh, companies such as Revolut, uh, 
that uh, operate in various segments of wealth management and link wealth management to uh, banking. The next technological domain uh, of the fintech uh, ecosystem uh, concern distributed ledger technologies. Uh, I don't think there's a need for an introduction, but these are technologies that are developed and deployed to record and authenticate data and share them securely across different parties. These are uh, cryptographic systems. These are distributed across computer networks and involve the users in, of course, recording, but as well as validations, record keeping and authentication. To have an idea between the differences, um, the difference between um, um, normal databases and the distributed ledger technology databases, such as blockchain, which is uh, the most important and always in the news sort of application in this area, we can see that input data input are usually uh, uh, distributed, but the, the storage uh, and processing uh, in um, centralized database compared to distributed ledger technology are very different. Most importantly, the control of traditional uh, databases, either centralized or distributed, uh, are uh, with a single entity, while distributed ledger to technology control is in the hand of a distributed network of people. <clears throat> so this technology includes different layers, a protocol layers, which is which concerns the rules and regulation uh, operating within the system. So uh, there is a network layer. Uh, which identify who is operating within the system and with um, uh, which task, and a data layer, which is then the information flow. To have an idea where this uh, sits within our um, uh, fintech ecosystem, uh, we uh, can see why uh, or actually how uh, distributed ledger technology have the potential to really be the gatekeeper of activities between um, the uh, uh, digital platform technology infrastructure and all other uh, users, both companies and financial, uh, financial uh, customers. Having said that, uh, apart from Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, uh, blockchain and distributed ledger technology are only started to be employed. <clears throat> uh, and um, this uh, slides will give you an idea of what is the hype around uh, blockchain, especially now uh, that this is receding and we can see uh, projects that are getting away from the R&D stage and getting more uh, into the application side. Um, very interesting, uh, IBM has over a thousand staff that are working on blockchain with some uh, $200 million uh, investment. Uh, moreover, quite recently, a couple of months ago, uh, a global Italian bank, Unicredit SPA, uh, just applied a uh, blockchain to perfect a smart contract. Um, there is to note here that uh, this has been um, happening uh, following large uh, piloting. The final, the final uh, area concerns of technology concerns uh, regulatory technologies. Uh, regulatory technology is a subset of FinTech which focuses on uh, those applications that may facilitate the delivery of regulatory requirements more efficiently, more effectively uh, than existing uh, capabilities. 
Uh, these uh, sector emerged after years of deregulation and after the crash of 2007 and 2008. Uh, so it is important to understand how there is both a policy uh, push uh, to uh, disintermediate uh, regulatory aspect as well as a demand pool uh, in order to, uh, let's say, um, include savings uh, or push savings uh, from uh, activities such as compliance, monitoring and reporting. That means this sector is uh, opening up opportunities in order to foster trust, to extend regulatory compliance, uh, basically to uh, make the functioning of the financial um, operation smoother, more transparency and uh, with the risk under control. Uh, in fact, um, um, uh, incentives to uh, uh, RegTech uh, investments uh, come both from um, the public uh, part of the economy as well as the private part of the economy or the financial market. And uh, we can see that uh, investment have been really uh, been ramping up recently. Uh, this uh, aspect is also uh, um, reflected on the fact that both public sector financial regulatory agencies and risk management companies and identity management companies as um, uh, fintech uh, companies are investing greatly in this sector. In fact, in 2018, it was the fintech segment who grew faster um, than, than, than all the others. <clears throat> we can move very swiftly uh, to the ownership of technologies, of financial technologies. We can see that uh, the majority of the value in, of the IP value and we're talking about patents and utility models here, is in the hands of a very few, very large corporation. And these corporations are mostly uh, traditional financial and banking companies. Still, uh, uh, we, 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 we might need to uh, keep this in mind uh, for, uh, for later. And we can see that uh, you know, we are at a phase where uh, disruptive innovations in the fintech ecosystem is uh, 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 toning down a bit, uh, while incremental innovation are increasingly providing uh, refined financial products, more services uh, to extend uh, uh, and cover demands from uh, either organization and consumers. We have seen, or we are seeing innovation in business model, in organizations, of course, new products and services and processes. And the extent of this innovation is systemic. And this is important because the FinTech ecosystem uh, still growing, it's reaching uh, some, um, some form of maturity. So, um, uh, actors, fintech incumbents are establishing uh, their, their, their footing onto the whole financial sector. New financial technology are increasingly integrated in the digitization of existing products as well as the creation of new one. And also, uh, FinTech is extending um, uh, geographically. The, this uh, dynamic is demand driven. Uh, so it's uh, systemic and of course is facilitated by regulation. The new regulatory drive is uh, somehow putting into place uh, guidelines for further 
development. Within this, recent trends have been growing. These are um, <coughs> invest. Uh, these are trends about uh, investments and investment deal. We can see that we started at less than a thousand deals in 2014 uh, to just about um, 1,700 investment deals, uh, totaling 39. 0.6 billion in 2018, and that is excluding the mega, mega deals that uh, uh, happened in Asia with uh, and financial. In fact, we see that the Asian uh, investments in fintech uh, has been, uh, you know, staggering to 165% growth in 2018. So, still, investments uh, are very high and growing. Um, um, <coughs> sorry. Um, uh, the sector uh, in itself is growing in terms of revenue, yet the uh, fintech companies are consolidating their position in their respecting field and are expanding in complementary products and service areas. And we can see that through various fintech companies that are extending uh, their operation into banking by um, obtaining, seeking and obtaining banking licenses with regulation. They reach out for customers' deposits and they are increasing saving and investments account from the customers. And of course, we see uh, unicorns. Uh, as we said, 39 fintech unicorn, um, 39 fintech unicorns uh, are in place uh, operating now and most of them are in Asia and North America although a few important ones like TransferWise, Revolut, Monzo, N26 and Klan are in uh, Europe. Uh, what's going to happen? Well, uh, as it is now, FinTech are consolidating the market position and expanding in complementary services. Uh, um, so they are growing their uh, customer space. And this is important because uh, in the alternative finance uh, sort of sector, we can see that the majority of these companies are playing a wait and see game. That is until 2020, when new European wide regulation uh, will begin to be implemented. However, larger alternative finance provider are by relying on their technological capability, are actually moving by replication. They, that means they open up uh, new businesses in different countries. They partner with large uh, local players, and they do uh, try to, uh, let's say, enter or at least uh, look in, in other European countries with low uh, fintech capabilities where this system is in a, a nascent sort of uh, areas. Uh, now, uh, I would uh, finish here, uh, both because of timing and both because I think that uh, we covered all aspects uh, of, the, um, of the topic. Uh, however, in the report, we presented three scenarios uh, of a future um, of the fintech ecosystem, whereby we look at uh, what happens in uh, if an organic growth scenario plays out, or if the sector goes through vertical integration, or uh, if we see increasing specialization within uh, the sector. So, before uh, going to look at the questions um, you placed in the chat. Uh, I would like to invite you uh, to signal your interest in the report, in the report, in which case I will forward it directly uh, to you. And um, well, with this, I do thank you uh, for uh, your attention. There is a question by Francisco. My perception is that unicorn fintech firms with the revolutionary service treat large 
that threat, large banks become bought by those banks. Am I right? Uh, well, uh, only to a certain extent. Um, what uh, we see in this uh, uh, in this area is that uh, most of the unicorns are uh, uh, partnering with uh, other uh, unicorn or other fintech uh, companies uh, in order to uh, capitalize on their strength, but also to colonize uh, markets which are traditionally um, occupied uh, by banks. Uh, in March 2019, for example, Monzo uh, joined Oak North, um, which is a fintech uh, bank involved in in peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending uh, in order to uh, increase its market in savings uh, and lending. So this is what uh, I think. This is the uh, the, um, the the way it's going uh, now. Of course, this is due to change. Um, if at the, some point, uh, banks and uh, a large technology company decides to uh, uh, reappropriate uh, their own uh, IP on the technologies that are now being deployed uh, in the fintech ecosystem. Any more questions? Oh, you're welcome. Oh, thank you, Francisco. Okay, if there's um, if there isn't any uh, more questions, uh, I would like to um, close this webinar and thank you all for. Uh, I look. Uh, yes, I will. The report will be available um, in the next couple of weeks, uh, and uh, in any case, I uh, may be able to uh, circulate it beforehand. <laughs> so. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye, and thank you. Thank you.